Welcome to the e-commerce toolbox, Expert Perspectives, a podcast by Noibu, where we explore the elite strategies and cutting edge insights with our expert guests. Get ready to propel your e-commerce business to the next level. Welcome, everyone. Joining us today, we have Alizé Dar Belmont. She's joining us from New York City, previously was living abroad in Europe. So welcome, everyone, to the e-commerce toolbox, Experts Perspective. Like I mentioned before, we have Alizé joining us here today from Richemont. She is the Senior Manager of E-commerce and Innovation at Richemont North America. So welcome, Alizé. Hi, nice. Thank you for having me. Very happy to be here today with you. As many of you know, Hishmo has partnered with Noibu when it comes to error and bug detection. So that's how Elise and I know each other, even though we might have uh, potentially crossed the halls, because even though Elise was all the way over in Europe, we actually went to the same university for a brief time. Because Elise, maybe start us off by uh, talking to us a bit about that, just because that's kind of funny. We're on the other sides of the world, but you came to the university in my hometown and then maybe talk to us a bit about how you got into Hishmo and how you got into e commerce. Of course. Yeah, that's actually a small world. But so, yeah, I did most of my studies in uh, France and I spent some time also in Switzerland. And yes, indeed, I had a chance to, to do a uni exchange in Ottawa in Telford, grade school. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great time. Canada is amazing. And it was a great experience to like meet in other culture, just to understand like how everybody works with so here in Ottawa and over in North America. But yes, I did like did business school and then I specialized myself on the marketing side and afterwards uh, I was more interested in like everything related to digital, more like the technology. I think it was, even though it was trendy at the time, it definitely also kind of triggered my interest. So um, indeed, I started as a in roles such as like product manager of Van Clef, Van Clef and Arpels. So I was definitely way more in the marketing side, more like really working closely with R&D with the creatives to really develop the watches. So far from the digital, but still kind of, I think it relates in the sense that we needed to make sure the product was perfect, that we offered the best experience to our customers, that everything was flawless. And I think it still relates to any part of the business, including the digital side. So I definitely learned from it, learned to make sure we offered indeed this luxurious experience. And then when I joined Richemont, actually with the group that owns Van Cleef and Arpels, I was way more on the technical side, but still keeping in mind everything that I learned from my past experiences in terms of how to make sure we be late to the audience and that we have this consistent customer experience. So that was very interesting. I was also then at reach more on the data side. So I had both hats more in terms of the e-commerce side, really implementing the e-com project and also on the data side. So make sure really we're reporting on performance that we are optimizing our website, but on not only our website, I think we talk about a lot omnichannel, which is also a trendy word such as AI, but I think omnichannel for us relates to making sure we connect and we, again, offer the best customer experience. So connecting our customer through the different channels, they can really find information on the product, but also uh, find the product itself, buy it, etc. So long answer to your whole question. <laughs> no, but I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And having, obviously, you have a really impressive resume and you came up kind of at the brand level. And like you mentioned, you studied marketing and you kind of learned the inner workings at the brand, and now you're at the kind of parent company or global level. So I guess my next question is, how did your past roles kind of coming up through VCA and the other brands, how did that kind of shape your approach to e-commerce? Now that you're kind of more so on the innovation side, and you have more of a broad role. Like, how do you think that actually influenced how you're looking at that today? Yeah, of course. Well, again, I think it really influenced in the way of like, envisioning digital not only as a single channel but thinking about the overall customer experience because I think we tend to see like one channel by itself thinking about really the tech side the features etc which is actually in the end just deserving like the customer itself so it's just one storefront among all the others and like being on this side of the marketing side and being closer to the customer themselves and understanding the markets etc I think it really 
enriched my vision in terms of having this digital storefront that is not only living by itself, but also living with the retail, with the cool centers, and really making sure that we build these connections and that we offer what the customer wants. So yeah, I think that really helped in that sense. Then I kind of learned the technical skills on the way. This was just an add-on, understanding also the customer through the data, because Indeed, on the marketing side, it is more like user trends, like understanding what the customer wants, but more like on the interview or what we can see on like feedback from the clients, etc. And then when I join more the digital side, we focus even more on like what are the customer journeys, what data we can find online, where we can find frictions. So like somewhere on the website, I don't know, we are losing our customers on the website, but also like can be through omnichannel journeys. So... Do we have like more appointments in boutique or do we see a huge amount of call that like an increase of traffic in our call centers? Like every little piece of data is telling a story. And I think through the data, we can really better understand the customer than better understand, like better tailor the experience. So again, I think marketing is more like towards the product design, but understanding the customer. And again, I think everything just relates to the customer in the end. So that's kind of interlinked between the the digital side. That makes sense. And I feel like that's a a big part of the reason why, as you've kind of climbed up in your career, you're in a role like you're in now, which is effectively more so trying to look at it from like a more of a brand and group level. How can you drive better customer journeys to effectively at the end of the day, make sure that the customers are finding and procuring the products the way they want to at the time they want to with kind of the omni-channel experience that you guys are curating. Could you maybe talk to us a bit about, I'm sure there's some that are going to be really kind of curious about in that transition from the brand to the group level, what are kind of some of the, the changing or some of the ways that you had to start looking at things maybe a little differently or some of the things that you kind of learned throughout that transition? That's a really good question. And I think it's super important to have both visions, uh, meaning that you definitely have a different approach when you're at group level and at brand level. I think at brand level, you are really more focused on the operational side. So maybe closer to the product, closer to the market itself, closer to the customer. I mean, you need to understand what our customers want. It's also about planning and making sure that over time, we'll also deliver the right product at the right time. But like, I think it was really important to me and like also looking back to start at the brand level and then move at the group level because... It really made me understand like concretely what's happening on the market. What do we need to deliver? And then moving on to the group side, it's a bit more high level also because you, of course, need to have a certain understanding of the market itself, the clients, etc. But you cannot go into too much details. Or otherwise, it's just overwhelming. So it's more about making sure that we, at the same time, tailor really the experience for each of the customer, but also make sure we can scale among the different brands so we can have good foundations and also innovations on top of it that are working across several industries. So yeah, I think it's very interesting to like have this group approach because you can see the different business models, you can see the different clients type, the personas, etc. And also how they are the same across the different divisions that we can have. So watchmaking, fashion, jewelry and at the same time they have different attributes different journeys different ways of converting different ways of interacting with our products so yeah i think coming from the brand side you really understand like operationally what do we need to do for like i don't know day-to-day orders what do we need to deliver to the customer in like two years five years longer because it's a long period of time for watch developments then at group level it's more How can we scale? How can we help the brands to grow over time? What are the levers we can use? I think data is really important. And also, again, being at group level, you are less close to the market, but, and I think you can have leveraging the data. So again, understanding what are the frictions, the common frictions across the different websites? What can we do better? What functionality do we need to deliver? Having some benchmarks. So it's a bit more on a consulting basis. If I could compare that, it's really bringing insights, bringing knowledge, expertise to the brands that might not have the resources internally or capacity or whatever. It's a good balance to have both experiences. 
I think a lot of what you're saying is kind of resonating to our experience, kind of working directly with you and trying to understand. So obviously in your career, you took a bit of a additional learning path with learning the technical stuff, and then obviously spending some time on the data side and maybe talk to us a bit about, I don't even know, maybe I'm coining something new, but you kind of take what it looks at like technical debt and bugs you're kind of looking at it like almost like a data-driven bug management system. And that's kind of one of the things that you and I have worked on together indirectly. So maybe talk to us a bit just from like a high level, like how have you taken something like, for example, bugs and code quality and, and implemented kind of that data-driven approach that you've kind of applied in, in other verticals like marketing and technology before? Great question. So indeed, I think being at Rismo, you have to take it at a data level because again, we don't really have time to go like, each day on the website and like check okay this button is not working this color is not right or whatever front end bug we can find and also i think obviously there were several layers in the website i mean the back end systems just have okay maybe the servers are down but that's like another problem i think this is also making sure that different layers are working properly together and the front end is just like what we deliver concretely to the customer, like what the customer sees. And sometimes I think we just tend to not see how much important it is to have like the front end working properly. Of course, the back end needs to be also excellent, but like boutique, for instance, you go to the boutique, I don't know, you cannot open the door. Like there is a problem. <laughs> it's the same. You go to the website. You cannot just like click on the button, like add to cart or I don't know, like complete my purchase. It's just like, all right, so I'm not going to come. I'm not going to find the product. So this is just too bad. I'm going to go to the competition or whatever, or I'm just going to find it on another channel. So I think this is something that really need to keep in mind. And the data is obviously like showing what's working, what's not working. And that's what's great in like the digital and website space is that you can gather a lot of data to really identify those frictions and understanding, okay, what is super important because you always have problems on the website. Of course, the power of Nobibu typically is just making sure also that we prioritize everything based on data again, like, okay, what percentage of revenue or what revenue loss do we see but because of this feature not working. So I think we had an approach of, okay, there are some tools internally, some backend systems that are that might have some bugs from time to time. That's obviously we need to figure out uh, these kind of things, but really have this having this excellent front end that's just what the customer sees. And also I think the customers are expecting like the best experience because they are going on the luxury website. They are paying the price for it. So why a button wouldn't be working or why, I don't know, I couldn't just click on an image and it's just not showing up. So on a data perspective, what friction do we see? Okay, maybe our customers are dropping specifically on this page. Why is that happening? Is that because there is something wrong on the page? Is that because, I don't know, the lack of information? But I think most of the time we just don't catch the issues that a customer are seeing or, I mean, not having that automated might just also not ease the customer the customer journey so they might be blocked or whatever and conversion rate drop can be many things but i think we like the tech side always have flows so having this automation and be able to have a tool such as it would really help uh, automating bug resolution and prioritization etc i think what you said before was really key it's about how do you leverage the data that you guys have you understand the consumer patterns and you want to be able to remove friction to the customer journey to really drive that and that's kind of the journey we've been on right now i think the level that you've hit in your career it's it's how do you then take these learnings and share it maison to maison to kind of help them as well managing through these things because obviously you've been on the operation level and you've kind of seen it as an operator and now you're seeing it more as a consultant on the brand level. As we look to some great insights so far, as we look to kind of wrap this up, I have one kind of parting question. Maybe it'll turn into two. What are you doing this year to really ensure consistency across all of the brands that you're working with? And maybe this is a good time to talk about what you guys are doing with AI as well, or how you at least think about it, maybe less getting into what you're doing, but more so some broad strokes around it. So I guess this is a two-part question. What are you doing to maybe 
how are you leveraging AI to kind of driver a consistent experience or how do you think it should leverage rather? Yeah. So I think uh, AI is definitely in the every mouth today. <laughs> we hear about AI uh, like everywhere, literally. So um, I think there are different levels of AI. Of course, like everybody kind of starts looking at it in a different way for us right now. So I think, first of all, they are like AI for me is automation is being able to learn from obviously past behaviors and kind of building up onto that and making sure we can automate some things. Either it can be bug detection or like improving the website experience overall, learning from customer behaviors, etc. So I think there are different levels, first of all, because AI is not just only on the website. It's also like it can be on the supply chain. It can be, I mean, obviously also on the website, but it's, it's just like bigger than that. So there are several priorities. If I'm focusing on the website itself, more like the e-commerce part, definitely we are also relying on third parties such as Noteboo because you have the expertise, the stack, etc. that are that is really much more mature than that we could have because we are not a tech company. We are a luxury brand company. So yeah, I think top priorities are really to really make sure we rely on your tool like and several all the tools that have been able to develop this algorithm that are really important to implement over time and to make sure we deliver the best customer experience. I'm hearing you say as well as, well, there's two things. I think AI is one of those strange things like the internet where you almost have to go technology first. So very rarely do you find the technology and then find the use case. I think AI and the internet are kind of similar is the technology was created and then the use cases. And I think kind of what you're flagging too is you guys aren't pivoting to try and be like, you guys understand what you are, which is a luxury retail brand and you're not trying to pivot into being a technology company. I think that's great, honestly. At least as we look to wrap this up, really appreciate your time. Obviously, we've loved working together with yourself and you've done some amazing things in your career and we're really excited to kind of see the trajectory that you're on. Is there anything as we look to sign off that you want to kind of say to everyone listening? I mean, digital and websites and e-commerce and innovation is just a super exciting time right now, like super exciting industry to be in, great things happening. So very happy to have Noibu over time. We've done some great things together. We build up great like operating model all around it, uh, great adoption overall in our team. So overall, I think we are on a good way to have better websites and to make sure we deliver the best customer experience. So thank you. Really happy to see our partnership going on. Likewise. Thanks, Elise. The e-commerce toolbox expert perspectives is brought to you by Noibu. To find out more about Noibu and how we can help you debug your e-commerce site and rocket your revenue, visit www.noibu.com. That's N-O-I-B-U.com. And then make sure to search for the e-commerce toolbox, Expert Perspectives on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found and click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Noibu, thanks for listening.